If you've ever stepped into the world of videography or photography, you'll know that the prices of many lenses can be quite expensive, and for this reason, many are steered away from pursuing this wonderful activity. However, there are workarounds to this problem, one of the best being investing in vintage glass, and today I'm going to provide you with 5 reasons why it's a great idea. The number one reason for most people is the price. Vintage lenses can often be found at ridiculously good prices, whether it's over the internet on sites like eBay or locally. Although this isn't always the case, such as with rare or collector glass, most vintage lenses can be found with relative ease and a bit of time and research. For example, I was able to pick up this Vivitar 75-205mm f3.8 lens for Canon's FD mount for a mere $12 a 50th of the modern day used equivalent, an EF70-200 f4L. And although they may not perform the same, vintage lenses have some notable benefits that I'll go into later. The cheap price of these lenses make them excellent for trying out different types of focal lengths and photography. A cheap vintage lens is also a great temporary solution while you save up for a more expensive lens of a similar spec. The second reason I recommend vintage lenses is their ability to adapt to different camera mounts. With the rise in popularity of mirrorless cameras and their short flange distances, you can easily adapt almost any vintage lens to any camera mount for about $15. This means that you could easily mix and match entirely different brands of lenses and cameras such as using Canon's FD primes and Sony E-mount, making use of cheap adapters. The third reason is build quality. Vintage lenses are commonly handmade of metal and tend to have very nice construction, beating out many of today's cheap plastic lenses even many decades later. For instance, this Canon FD 135mm f2.8 is built like a tank and has build quality comparable to many modern Canon L and Sony G Master lenses. But you will have to keep in mind that when buying these lenses, because of their age, some might have a little fungus growing on the glass elements, although this usually does not affect image quality or usability. And tied with the build quality is the fourth reason, controls. Even though vintage lenses are usually manual focus and aperture only, many have tactile, precise, and satisfying controls that make up for their lack of electronic controls. Plus, many mirrorless cameras have in-body image stabilization, which helps to make up for vintage lenses' lack of optical image stabilization, as well as great tools for focus, like peaking or digital zoom to check focus, which make manual focusing pretty easy even for a beginner. This makes them well suited for video work, especially in a studio environment where manual aperture and focus are commonly necessities. Vintage lenses even allow you to set your aperture and focus when your camera is powered off, which is a pretty useful feature many modern lenses commonly lack. The last reason may be somewhat subjective, the looks. And I don't mean in a physical sense, even though many vintage lenses do look pretty nice, but instead the distinct characteristics that many vintage lenses have that can't be replicated. They tend to have a very dreamy and venerable look that modern lenses can't hope to imitate, with unique properties such as the smooth, swirly bokeh found on lenses like the Helios 44-2. Vintage lenses also have a reputation for being somewhat soft, but stop down a bit, they can often come close to or match modern day lenses' clarity, like seen here with the Canon FD 50mm f1.8 in comparison with a modern kit lens. Vintage lenses also tend to have some optical imperfections such as increased chromatic aberration or inconsistencies in color reproduction, but both can easily be fixed in post or even embraced to help tell a more stylized story. So those are 5 reasons why I would highly recommend investing in vintage lenses, whether you're just starting out or even if you have lots of experience in photography or cinematography. With that said, if you learned anything from this video or enjoyed it, please do consider liking and subscribing for more content like this, and hopefully I'll see you on the next one.